This analysis of Sam Mendez's revolutionary road shows the very last scene that April and Frank are seen together. This takes place the morning after Frank and April's Hit largest me. argument so that occurred the me. night before. Oh, I can't be bothered. The scene opens with shots of rooms where many of the previous scenes shot in the Wheeler house took place. First, the living room where the Wheelers had the Givings family over for the first time and ultimately caused Frank and April to see that John understood their situation of feeling trapped in their suburban lifestyle. Second, the dining room where the second get-together of the Wheelers and the Givings Get took place feet. just the Decide. evening before. You're better off here, after all? You figure it's more comfy here in the old hopeless emptiness, after all, huh? Oh, wow. That did it. Look at his face. What's the matter, Wheeler? Am I getting warm? All right, son. I think we'd better... You know be something? I wouldn't be surprised if he knocked her up on purpose just so he could spend the rest of his life hiding behind a maternity dress. That way he'd never have to find out what he's really made of. Now look! I think that's just about enough out of you. Then finally, the audience is shown the second living room that is connected just off of the kitchen, where the most shocking part of April and Frank's argument took place the night before. Blow you up. You are an empty, empty, hollow shell of a woman. I mean, what the hell are you doing in my house if you hate me so much? Why the hell are you married to me? What the hell are you doing carrying my child? I mean, why didn't you just get rid of it when you had the chance? Because listen to me. Listen to me, I got news for you. I wish to God that you had. These three rooms are the rooms where the Wheelers had their arguments amongst themselves, with the Giving family, especially John, and had grand discussions with their neighbors, Shep and Millie. This particular morning, everything is quiet. There's not any non-diegetic sound, and the only thing that the audience hears is the ambient noise of cheerful birds in the background, representing just another normal day in suburban Connecticut. We see the nice, warm sun coming in through the windows, lighting up what should be a happy household. The pace of the entire scene is very serene. We then hear muffled footsteps getting louder and louder until we cut to Frank coming down the stairs dressed for work. A rack focus change is following Frank as he confusingly walks into the kitchen, seemingly unaware that April has returned home. He finds April making breakfast, just as she would on any other Good day. Morning. After seeing a medium close-up of Frank, Good morning. we can see that he looks quite distraught. Would you like scrambled eggs or fried? Yet happy to see that his wife has come back after she stormed out during their argument oh. the night before. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. In the book, it describes that when he saw her, quote, he wanted to go down on his knees and put his arms around her thighs, but he held back. Something told him, possibly the very shyness of her smile, that it would be better just to join her in the playing of this game, this strange, elaborate pretense that nothing had happened yesterday, unquote. Scrambled, I guess. If, in the book and film, April Fine. continues to ask Frank if I'll he would scrambled like scrambled too. eggs or fried for breakfast. He replies scrambled, and she agrees that she will have them as well. During this conversation, the camera is doing a shot-reverse shot between Frank and April for a fixed position for both. This currently adds to the peaceful setup of the entire situation. Frank, then not expecting what is coming next, sits down at the table as she prepares the food. In the book, the narrator describes Frank's thoughts as, quote, It was incredible. No morning after a fight had ever been as easy as this. But still, he thought, no fight had ever been as bad as that. Could it be that they fought themselves out at last? Maybe this was what happened when there was really and truly nothing more to say, either an acrimony or forgiveness. Life did, after all, have to go on. Unquote. The first bite that Frank takes displays his emotion as somewhat nervous, 
yet happy to be having a nice breakfast with April. In the book, the narrator describes that for Frank, quote, it was like the first time he'd ever taken a girl out to dinner, at 17, when the idea of actually loading food into his mouth and chewing it right there in front of her had seemed an unpardonably coarse thing to do, unquote. After reading that excerpt from the book, kind of nice we can understand the actual emotion change. Frank is feeling on screen. Yes. During their entire meal, over-the-shoulder yeah, shots are used to show each character speaking kind of an and then switching to the other character for the other's reaction. In the, the book, it notes that, quote, she wasn't eating her eggs, and he saw her fingers were shaking a little as she reached for her coffee cup. Otherwise, she looked completely self-possessed, I imagine it is a pretty big deal. However, in the film, she is eating her eggs and does not shake once at the table. They continue to converse about Frank's big day as he had a meeting with his boss in his future career with computers. For once, the audience and readers see Frank and April having a normal conversation and complimenting each other Really big computers. Even bigger than the 500. Didn't I tell you about that? No. Why don't you tell me now? You know, basically, it's just a, a big, fast adding machine. As Frank is drawing a model of a computer for April on a napkin, we look back to April as she looks at Frank. She certainly seems faced by something, whether it be that she wants to tell Frank something or is just bored by the subject being discussed is up for interpretation. Mm. Oh, I see. At least I think I see. When he hands her the napkin, she seems to find it yes, quite interesting. Kind of interesting. At this time, the camera goes to using mid-close-ups of both characters, but still oh. keeps the same perspectives. This changes at this time yeah, this to show, of course, the more in intimate way. mannerisms of both of the characters, but also to show how they are perhaps bonding over something, and to show their apparent regrowing closeness. From what we have seen as her reactions before, we can infer that she is acting to be interested. She is acting to be the supportive housewife that suburban society expects of her. She has stopped her childish dreaming and accepts the reality that that is all she really is. She continues to say, quote, You should value what you do, Frank. You're obviously good at it. This he takes personally. And we can see that Frank's eyes get a little glassy. Well, I guess I'd better be getting started, huh? We are then moved back to the over-the-shoulder shot, more impersonal shot of Frank and April standing up. He then thanks her for the breakfast. Listen, though, April, th this was really nice. I mean, it was a swell breakfast, really. I, I don't know when I've ever had a nicer, a nicer breakfast. Frank is described in the book that, quote, the walls of his throat closed up. He felt he was about to cry, but he managed to hold it back, end quote. In another close-up, intimate shot, with a shallow depth of field, April tells him that she enjoyed it as well. Frank then walks off screen and we are left looking at April. I enjoyed it too. Frank then walks off screen and we are left looking at April. Once he passes, she stops smiling and puts on a more fervent face and turns to see Frank out the door. We can notice from the beginning of the scene that April's clothing is actually very closely colored to the color scheme of the interior of the house, especially the walls. It is very pale and further shows how April is unbearably connected to the Wheeler home. It could also be noted that such light and pale colors portray a more airy personality, just as April has with her sometimes grandiose, unrealistic ideas, according to Frank. Looking back through the kitchen conversation, and then once they have stood up from the table, we can notice that on April's side the sun is very brightly shining through the kitchen sink window, 
causing the light to shine off of all of the glasses, bowls, and light wood that the kitchen is furnished with. This fantastic natural light is ultimately illuminating April's character. When we look at Frank in the kitchen, we see the dark, muffled tones of the living room behind him, yet his face shines due to the light coming from April's side. He even has a glimmer in his eye that is very prominent. This particular scene in the movie is a very important one, as it shows Frank and April's last moments together. It perhaps could be called the quiet before the storm, even though the entire story up until now has been quite a whirlwind. It is if not the calmest scene in the film and the book, and leaves the audience wondering what exactly will happen next. It's very unpredictable. Of course, though, the audience will hope for the very best outcome for the Wheeler family, but April's small mannerisms hint otherwise. When we look back at April, we see that half of her face is lit up, but half is not, and that the glimmers in her eyes are not as prominent, naturally. This is perhaps trying to symbolize to the audience that Frank is in a dark place, but sees the light, while April, who was once shining, is slowly digressing further and further into darkness. Frank goes to the door and picks up his briefcase as April walks across the scene out of focus. Frank, looking quite sad and confused, turns and asks her, And you don't... you don't hate me or anything? We then cut to April, another shallow, medium, no. intimate shot. One thing that no, is noticeable, though, is that her face now has no light on it. In the book, it describes that, quote, Her eyes look deep and serious. She seemed to be glad he had asked her that question, as if it were one of the few questions in the world she could answer with authority, end quote. In the film, we then cut to looking over Frank's shoulder as he watches April walk toward him. As April does so, her face lights up the closer she gets to Frank. Have a good day. This really symbolizes how dark of a place April is actually in, and how for one last time, okay. she came into the light and acted as a normal housewife for so her dear long. husband. As Frank waves at her, she happily waves back, but a deep sense of darkness always returns to April's once beautiful and truly cheerful expression. The sound continuity of this part certainly brings the anxiousness back to April, as well as to the viewer. Frank backs out of the driveway and she watches him with quite a muted tone. Once he's gone, she realizes that now is the time that she has been waiting for. Frank is at work, the kids are at Millie's house. It is obvious revenge for what she considers being so isolated in their nice home and life on Revolutionary Road. Hence, she herself is revolutionary. A long shot is then shown of April entering the house again, and the scene ends. But the story then continues with how she carries out her abortion, leading to the overwhelming resolution of the film.